What's up everybody, let's talk about the bosses in Sunken Temple. Now before engaging the first boss, Atal Alarion, you want to run to the sides of the room, clear some adds, and use these ropes to get up top and activate the four altars that are currently channeling the boss. If you do not do this, the boss will be extremely powerful and pretty much be unkillable. Now for this boss, everything is pretty simple. You want to tank the boss pretty much against the stairs, and what's going to happen is pillars are going to spawn around the room. You're going to want to position yourself so that when the boss knocks you back, you get knocked into a pillar to destroy it. When everyone gets knocked back, the main tank will also get knocked up into the air, and the off tank will need to taunt. Just keep in mind that the pillars can cause LOS issues for healers, so be very mindful of that. Other than that, this fight is pretty easy. Up next, we have the Festering Rot Slime. For this boss, you will be constantly moving around the circle. While pretty much kiting this boss around, he's going to be throwing slime pools at the raid. You can have range bait these slime pools to one side of the hallway so that you have a clear path on one side. If you find yourself standing in the slime, move ASAP as it deals a ton of damage. Now over time, this boss will gain stacks of a buff that increases his movement speed. Keep moving backwards and attack the purple items on the side of the hallway. Once you destroy these items, they get moved to the center and swallowed up by the boss. Once he eats enough of these items, he will stop moving completely and you can pump DPS. Just rinse and repeat this, and it's pretty easy. Up next is the Atalai Defenders. This fight is basically six mini bosses that you will fight in a row. Once you kill one of the bosses, the previous one will respawn as a ghost and will be able to be CC'd. Use Shackle, Hunter Traps, and whatever other CC you have available on all ghosts. They cannot be killed. Each of these six mini bosses pretty much has one single mechanic. For Zol Lore, move away from Corrupted Slam. For Mijan, kill totems. For Zolo, interrupt his chain lightning. For Gasher, he gains an attack speed buff, so you can either kite him to wait for the buff to fall off, or wait for him to summon axes, which will also get rid of the buff. If you engage him while he has the buff up, he may destroy your tank. For Loro, he constantly resets threat, so basically have your tank spamming taunt if necessary. And for Huku, interrupt his casts, and you can either off tank or ignore his adds completely, and it's pretty much GG. Up next, we have Weaver and Dream Scythe. This boss will occasionally cast Wing Buffet, which will knock you back. Be mindful of the hole in the center of the room. If you fall into that hole, there is no coming back. The closer you are to the boss, the more damage you will take and the stronger the knockback will be. One of the safest places you actually can be is right next to the hole or in line with the hole because this guarantees that you can't get knocked into the hole. At around 60%, Weaver will come down and join the fight. Their health is linked, so just keep DPSing one boss, unless you have the gear and confidence to cleave them down, which I'm sure people will be doing in the near future. There will now be two wing buffets. Dream Scythe will knock you back, and then Weaver will follow up about a second or two later with another, so make sure to position accordingly. After wing buffets, just make sure that when picking the dragons back up, they don't breathe on the entire raid. Other than that, this fight is pretty simple, just rinse and repeat, and it's GG. Next up, we have Ogam and Jamal. You're going to be killing Ogam first because Jamal is immune to any damage. Stack range to bait Holy Novas and then move accordingly as a group. Now, obviously, you do want to avoid those Holy Novas, which are the big yellow AoE on the ground. You want to decurse curses on players and dispel Holy Fire dots, and you can also interrupt Smite casts to reduce some incoming damage. Once Ogam is defeated, Jamal will enter the fight. Jamal will cast Shadow Sermon Pain, which will put a big dot on 10 players in the raid. This must be dispelled immediately. Other than that, melee needs to run out when Psychic Scream is being cast, unless you have some way of being immune to fear. We need to have big heals when he casts AoE Penance, damaging the entire raid. You cannot interrupt it. And just make sure that when his shield is up, it's being purged down so that you can actually deal damage to the boss. Funny story is our first kill here, we did not know that the shield was dispellable, so we did the entire fight on hard mode without purging the shield until the last 10%. Don't make that mistake. It's way easier than we made it. Up next, we have two more dragons, Hazaz and Morphaz. Tank Hazaz and make sure your DPS is not standing directly behind him. Have your melee DPS stand off to the side, similar to Anixia, to avoid a tail swipe knockback. 
He'll put a dot on some people called Dreamer's Lament, but just heal them through it. At 80%, he will cast Animate Flames and Summon Adds, and also start casting Lucid Dreaming. Cleave these adds down quickly. He will put people to sleep and send them downstairs. And you can only be put to sleep and sent downstairs if you are not affected by the fire debuff that you can obtain by running through the fire on the floor. This fire debuff, when obtained, will give you a massive speed boost and allow you to walk into sleeping players to wake them up and bring them back upstairs. If anyone is still asleep and downstairs when Morphaz finishes cast of Eternal Slumber, they will die. So anyone upstairs must walk into the fire and then run into sleeping players to wake them up and bring them back upstairs. Just keep in mind you can only wake up one player at a time, meaning once you grab the fire, you can run into one player to wake them up and then you will have to grab the fire again to wake up another. Additionally, downstairs you can kill nightmare vines to spawn a portal to bring you back upstairs, but only one player can use each portal, so there still may be some players that need to be woken up before they die. Now you can either split DPS to maximize damage and have half the raid upstairs and half downstairs, or just keep everyone upstairs. It's unclear which strategy is best currently. At 30%, Hazaz will cast Lucid Dreaming again, and this will send everyone downstairs yet again, but this time there are no fire adds or nightmare vines. You must now DPS Morphaz from 30% to 0 before he finishes his cast of Eternal Slumber. It's a pretty big DPS check, but very doable. Up next, we have the Shade of Iranicus. For this fight, your ranged DPS should all stack on one player. We're going to be interrupting Bellowing Roar every single time it's being cast, and we're going to be cleansing Lethargic Poison immediately. Additionally, Corrosive Breath will reduce tank armor, so you need to do a tank swap. He will cast Deep Slumber, which puts clouds on the ground. If you touch one of these clouds, you will be stunned for 15 seconds and reduce all incoming damage by 99%. This is extremely important to remember, because when he begins to cast Waking Nightmare, everyone must run into a cloud to get stunned and avoid dying. Once Waking Nightmare is cast, it will remove the stun from everyone and you can go back to DPSing. Make sure throughout all of this you're cleaving and AoEing all adds down as fast as possible. Getting adds down on this fight is more important than boss damage. About every 10 seconds or so, the boss is going to spawn 5 whelps. Make sure you're killing these immediately. At 40%, again the boss will go to sleep taking 99% reduced damage. He will spawn two adds, interrupt these adds, and cleave them down fast. He will now also start spawning an additional three adds alongside the whelps. All adds should be main focus. Your ranged group no longer really needs to be stacking here, just make sure that you're avoiding acid rain, it hits really, really hard, and it's telegraphed by those blinking yellow circles around the room. At 10%, the boss will soften rage and start spawning adds like crazy. At this point, focus all of your DPS into the boss and push him to zero as fast as possible, while still making sure to avoid Acid Rain. Up next, we have the Avatar of Hakar. To be able to summon this boss, make sure you or someone in your raid has done the quest and received the Egg of Hakar. To start this encounter, kill the adds surrounding the Hakari Bloodkeeper to be able to engage him. The Hakari Bloodkeeper will shoot an Acid Rain projectile at range, so do the same thing you did for Shade of Aranicus, and have your range stack on one person and move accordingly to avoid the rain. Additionally, curses will be placed on some of the melee. They need to run out of the group and be decursed once they are away from the raid. Once the Hakari Bloodkeeper reaches 100% mana, the boss will spawn. Once the boss spawns, we will have a melee stack and a range stack. He will put Corrupted Blood on two targets. Those two targets need to immediately leave their stack and position themselves somewhere behind the tank, but not in range of other players. If they are within range of other players, they will spread the corrupted blood and pretty much wipe the raid. Once you see the boss start casting Drain Blood, players with corrupted blood must position themselves in front of the boss behind the tank to get the blood cleansed off of them. After they are cleansed, they will turn into a skeleton and not be able to receive healing for 5 seconds so healers should try to top off Corrupted Blood players before Drain Blood goes out. That's pretty much it for this fight, rinse and repeat, and you should have no problems. I hope this video was able to help you guys, and if it did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and come jump over to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammerdance if you guys want to hang out with me live. But anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.